Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Elevate Techie. This video is the first of the Java playlist which I'm going to create and in this I would like to cover the topics of what is Java and a brief about programming languages and why and where to use Java. So guys before heading further, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do subscribe for more interesting stuff. And that said, let's get started. So let me start by answering the question, what is Java? I would say Java is a high level object oriented programming language. And to understand the terms high level and object oriented programming language, let's try to understand basically what programming language is. As we all know, the purpose of any language is to communicate. So the same goes with the programming language as well. So in programming language, we'll try to communicate with the computers. And let's see some of the popular programming languages over here. So they are Python, JavaScript, Java and HTML. To know more about the programming languages, let's see how we can classify them. There are multiple ways to classify the programming languages. They can be classified as procedural, functional, object oriented, scripting and logic. We can also see the examples for each of these programming language classification. So here we can see that Java can be considered as object oriented programming language as well as the procedural programming language as it shares both the programming language features. Now let's dig deep and try to understand each of these categories. What are their features and advantages and the disadvantages of each. And the first one is procedural programming language. To simply put what procedural language is, we can say that it follows a sequence of statements or commands known as procedures and those can also be called as routines or subroutines or functions and using these instructions we will try to communicate with the computer. And during the program execution, any of this procedure can be called or in one procedure we can call the other procedure as well. And also in the procedural programming language we treat data and procedures as a different entity. As we understood what procedural language is, now let's look into the key features of it. So as I mentioned before, we can say it has a sequence of instructions which we use to communicate with the computer. And as it is a sequence of instructions, we can call it as a structured programming language. And we also have this sequence of instructions written in our logical code blocks called as procedures. And also it focuses on what to do instead of how we can do it. Like if we get any implementation to be done, it focuses on what implementation we are trying to do rather than how we are trying to implement it. And apart from that, it also follows the block based control flow and it has the minimal abstraction between the mission and code. Now let's look into the advantages of this procedural programming language. So we can say the first is that it is a general purpose programming language and also it has the easy implementation of the compilers and the interpreters and it has the large availability of the learning resources and also the code which we are trying to write uh, which is called as the source code. It is portable for any of the device like and the code we write through this procedural programming language is reusable in the different parts of programming and also it is easy to track each of these procedures. Now let's look into the disadvantages of this procedural programming language. Even though it is a sequence of instructions or commands, it is difficult to write this procedural programming language as it doesn't have much inbuilt libraries supported. And also it doesn't have the concept of class or object. It is difficult to relate the code which we write with the real world objects. And in the procedural programming language, importance is given to the operation rather than the data and one other disadvantage is that it is insecure as the data is exposed to the whole program. Also it is hard to reuse the code which we write when we want to develop a complete different application. Next we have the functional programming language. We can say that the functional programming language is designed to handle the symbolic computations and the list processing apps. So it is totally based on the mathematical functions. Few of the features of this functional programming language are it supports the higher order functions and also lazy evaluation features. And unlike the procedural programming language, it doesn't support the control flows. And as we discussed, this functional programming language is mainly designed on the concepts of the mathematical functions. Now let's look into the advantages of this 
functional programming language. So it is a bug free code as it doesn't support any state concept. As it doesn't support any state concept, it is very efficient for parallel execution and we can efficiently run the programs concurrently in this functional programming language. It also supports the nested functions, lazy functional constructs. The disadvantages of this functional programming language are as it doesn't support any state concept and its features are very limited. We are not recommended to use this functional programming language to develop any of the software solely. Also, it requires a large amount of the time and memory and it is less efficient when we compare it to the other programming languages. Next, we have object-oriented programming language. This object-oriented programming language is very popular as it uses the concept of the classes and objects which can easily be related to the real world. And it is based on the idea that each object which holds the program is self-sustainable. Now let's look into the features of this object-oriented programming language. As stated earlier, it is designed based on the concepts of classes and objects. And it follows the imperative programming model and it focuses on how we do the things rather than what we are trying to implement. Also, object-oriented programming language uses the mutable data and it allows the class-specific behavior through polymorphism. Also, it is easier to debug through the classes as it follows the abstraction concept. The advantages of this object-oriented programming language are it is easy to manage as they support the modularity and encapsulation and also this programming language mimics the real world by using this concepts of classes and objects which makes it easier to understand for everyone. And the object oriented programming language is reusable as they use this objects concept and also it is secure as they support the encapsulation concept. Now let's look into the disadvantages of this object oriented programming language. So when compared to the other programming languages, we can say that it is slower and uses the higher memory and as it has the state concept the methods can have the certain side effects and this will also make it not suitable for the parallel programming implementation and also this object oriented programming language we can see it as over generalized as we seen theoretically what are the features of procedural object oriented and functional programming languages and also its advantages and disadvantages. Let's look into the example implementation for these three programming languages. First we have the procedural programming language and for example if we have a e-com application and in that e-com application let's say that end user has created a particular order and if we want to save those order details how we can implement that using the procedural programming is shown over here. So in this we can create a function which we can also call as procedures as I mentioned. In that we will be adding the code logic to store all the order details. So in the similar way we can complete the task using a set of instructions which we call as procedure or a routine. In this as you observe we doesn't have the concept of class or object used. And next we have the object oriented programming language. In this has we have the class and the object concepts used. So first for any of the implementation to be done, we will create a class first and in that class we will have a constructor and also we have methods or functions defined and in that methods we can add the code logic to complete any of this task. And next we have the functional programming language example and in this we can see that this is mainly used for performing the mathematical operations and in this we doesn't have this concept of classes and also we doesn't have any functions or procedures created and it is very simple to implement but it doesn't support much features compared to the other two programming languages. Apart from the procedural, functional and object oriented programming languages, we also have scripting programming language and this scripting programming language is mostly used to automate any of the repetitive tasks and it is very easy to implement but it is not used solely for uh, developing any of the web applications or mobile applications we would say 
and they are used for managing the dynamic web content or support processes in large applications. And the last of the category, we have the logical programming language. In this programming language, instead of telling the computer what to do, it expresses the series of facts and rules to instruct the computer on how to make a decision. So it totally works on instructing the computer to make any of the logical decisions. We can also categorize the programming languages as the front-end programming languages and the back-end programming languages. So in front-end programming language, we have the examples of HTML, CSS, JavaScript and React. And when it comes to back-end programming language, we have the JavaScript, PHP, Java and Python. And to understand the difference between this front-end programming language and back-end programming language, we can say that front-end programming languages are primarily concerned with the user perspective of the software. So for a web application, whatever the user sees on the browser, all those development can be done using the front-end programming language. And whatever the features of the application it offers, all of those logics can be done using this back-end programming language. So we can say that front-end deals mostly with the text or colors or font or image, so which are visible to the user, whereas the back-end deals with the storage or manipulation of the server side of the software. And the other way to classify programming language, we can say it as high-level programming languages and the low-level programming language. In the high-level programming language, we have Java, Python, C++ and JavaScript. For the low-level programming language, we have the examples as C, Basic and Pascal. So let's try to understand what this high-level and low-level programming language using the diagram. This represents the different layers of our computer. So in our computer, we have the hardware as the outermost layer and in this hardware, we, we can consider the examples like CPU, monitor, desktop, etc. In below of this hardware, we have the mission language. And this mission language will always be written in the zeros and ones. And this mission language is understandable only to the computers and humans can't read it easily. And underneath this, we have the assembly language. And this assembly language is in between the mission language and the high level language, we can say. So on top of this assembly language, we have the high level language, which can easily be understood by humans, which are basically C, Java, Python, etc. So we can say from this diagram that the biggest factor that differentiates this high level programming language and low level programming language is how easily it is understood to the humans. So low level programming language comes with the assembly language and the mission language and these are not easily understood to the humans and more mission friendly. Whereas in high level programming language, these are more human friendly and the humans can easily understand them, whereas the machines can't understand. And the last category to classify programming languages is as interpreter programming language and the compiled programming language. So in the interpreter programming language, we have the examples of Python, JavaScript, PHP and Ruby. And in the compiled programming language, the examples are C, C++, and Erlang. Let's try to understand what this interpreted and compiled programming language using a diagram. So in this example, let's take the flow of writing the source code and getting the final result. So for the compiled programming language, we have the source code and then it goes to the compiler where it compiles the code and it converts the code which we have written into zeros and ones which the machine can easily understand and whatever is the output that will get displayed for us in the results. Whereas in the interpreted programming language, we have the source code written and then it goes to the interpreter rather than the compiler and it shows the output of the program in the results. Now let's go to the first definition which we have seen for Java. So we have seen Java is a high level object oriented programming language, which means that Java is easy for the humans to understand as it is a high level programming language and also it follows all the features which are supported by the object oriented programming language like so hope you got the idea on what this high level object oriented programming language mean. Now let's see why Java is so popular and why the developers continue to use this Java over the other programming languages. The first one is that Java is known for WORA which means write once, 
and run it anywhere as it supports the multi platform which means that we can write the code once in one of the os like windows and the same code can be executed in any other platforms and the other reason why the developers go for java is that it has many inbuilt functions and libraries so that we doesn't need to write each function from the scratch also it has the high quality developer tools where we can write the code debug test deploy and manage and in java we have many active communities that supports the developers while they face any challenges Apart from that, we also have the high quality learning resources as Java has been around for long time for the new developers to learn. Also, we can say that Java is reliable and secure when we compare it to the other programming languages as the users can download this Java code over any network and they can run it in the secured environment in which it can't do any harm. As we understood what Java is and what are the features of it now, let's try to understand where Java can be used. As Java is free to use and a versatile language, it builds a localized and a distributed software. So some of the common uses of the Java are in game development using Java, we can develop many popular mobile computer and video games. Also, it can be used in the cloud computing as Java is often referred as write once and run anywhere, which means that it supports the multiple platforms. So it makes it perfect for decentralized cloud based apps. Cloud providers choose Java language to run the programs on the wide range of underlying platforms. Apart from that, it can also be used in big data for data processing engineering that can work with complex data and massive amount of real-time data. Even in the artificial intelligence, Java is a powerhouse of the ML libraries and its stability and speed makes it perfect for AI application development like natural language processing and deep learning. And we also have the Java used for program sensor hardware, edge devices that can connect independently to the internet. So these are all some of the places where Java can be used. Hope you guys got a basic idea on what Java is and understood what programming language is and some of the types of the programming languages and why Java and where to use it. So that's it for this video guys. In the coming up video, let's learn more about Java. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you learned something new today. Please do like, share and subscribe the channel.